Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on assembly language statements. I am Ms. Pratibhai Argi from WIT Solapur. Let us see the learning outcome of this session. At the end of this session, you will be able to demonstrate the types of assembly statements and identify the difference in assembly statements. Now, let us recall what is an assembler. Assembler is generally called as a translator, which is translating low level assembly language code into the object code, which we call it usually as a machine language code. See the diagram where we are taking assembler and the input for this is a source code which is in the form of assembly language code and the object code which is in the form of machine language code. Consider our simple assembly language scheme. Here we are considering the 11 operation codes with the 11 mnemonics and what they are doing that is depicted in this table. Let us see what are these one. The first one is called as instruction opcode which is given in the machine language code. The second format is in assembly code or we call it as a mnemonic code which as a programmer we are writing that in an assembly language program. And finally we are producing the remarks which are providing the details of it. Let us see one by one all these assembly language schemes. The first one which we call it as stop uh, whose opcode is 00, 0 which is used for stopping the execution. So in a program when we want to stop the execution we are using this mnemonic. The next are the four operations are there which are the mathematical operations. So the four operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division with their opcodes uh, as 1, 2, 3 and 0, 8. And these operations are take, uh, taking place by two operands where operand 1 and operand 2 are taken for the operation as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and the result is stored in the operand 1. Our format of the assembly statement is all, always like this. Here we are considering that the mnemonic opcode is there and the two operands are there where the first operand is always a register and the second operand is a memory address and every instruction is taking a label here for the execution. Let us see the next part of it. The later two mnemonic codes are for moving the contents from memory address to the register and the register to the memory address uh, which are having the code as 4 and 5. The later two are COMP and BC where COMP is for comparing the two operands so it is comparing the two operands where it is not affecting any operand, it is only affecting the condition codes. So it is comparing the two operands and it is setting the condition flags for the later execution. The next one is BC which is branch on condition where it is taking the, uh, the location counter is moving to a particular location where the execution again later on start. It branches the execution of the statement. Next two are for re inputting and outputting that is read for reading the contents from the memory 09 is the opcode for it and the next one is for displaying where it is displaying the content to the memory address uh, the mnemonic is print. Now moving towards assembly language statement there are three types of statements which are the first one is imperative statement the second one is declaration statement and the third one is the assembler directives. Now let us see one by one all these one. Imperative statement. What are the imperative statements? Usually these statements are the actual actions which are performed during the execution. And typically usually what happens that imperative statement translates into one machine instruction. So one statement is converting as one machine instruction. Consider the examples as move which is moving the contents from register to memory or memory to register, add for the addition and the next one is for multiplication. Now the second type of statement assembly statement is declaration statement which is used for declaring memory 
which is reserving the memory area and associating a label or a name with them which we call it usually as an identifier or a variable so the syntax for these there are basically two statements we are using here which is the first one is ds and the second one is dc ds is for declaring the storage and dc is for declaring the constant we will see these one in detail later consider the example so here the first statement that is a ds1 which is declaring a storage of one memory word and assigning a name to it as a the second one is declaring a constant the value of that constant is 2 so it is taking is storing the value as 2 and the name of that memory address is taken as two that is 2 the third type of statement that is assembler directive which is instructing the assembler to perform certain actions during the assembly of a program so usually these are not used for the execution these are used only for the assembler to perform certain action for the assembly of a program examples are start end etc so to start the execution to end the execution so these are the instructions which we are providing for the assembler now pause the video and identify the imperative and assembler statements which are given in the program consider this program and identify imperative and assembler directives in this let us see what are the imperative statements so the imperative statements are read move r add move m and printing the value and the declarative statements are assembler directives are start stop and end moving towards the detailing of declaration statements as earlier i told that is declare storage is one of the statement which is reserving the memory area associated for a given name so consider the the syntax for this is label ds uh, which is a mnemonic code and the constant value example a ds1 it is now reserving one word of memory and the name for that is used as a so it is naming that memory word as capital a consider the second example where g is a memory name and ds that is a mnemonic one and 200 so what is this 200 indicates this 200 indicates the memory number of memory words how much it is allocating so it is allocating it is reserving a block of 200 memory words and the name given to it is g now if we are specifying it as g plus 5 what it is doing it is accessing g plus 5 that is the sixth word of a memory that is about the declare storage now talking about the declare constant so it is declaring a memory word and assigning a constant to it the mnemonic used for this is dc syntax same as the earlier one where label is given which is a name for it and dc has a mnemonic code and the actual value we are specifying in a single quote the example 1 dc1 so it is associating one with a memory word containing a value second one consider count as a memory name and dc the op code and 201 so here 201 is also a value a constant which we are assigning for a memory word count so the various forms of these values are decimal binary hexadecimal etc you can specify all these values for a constant now what are these constants this declare constant statement usually initializes a memory with a value it is only initializing the value whatever we are specifying in a single quote by dc statement usually these values are not protected by the assembler means we can change the value by writing a statement for example here see the earlier statement is declaring one as a memory and see now this example here what we have specified that is move m b register one so in this case the contents of b register we are moving to the memory address 1 so here we are changing the value of 1 so hence we are calling it as it is not protected by the assembler now moving towards literals again literal is used as an operand in a statement which is we usually call it as a immediate value which we are specifying in a in an operand in a as an operand for an instruction consider our instruction here add a register equal to 
so equal to 5 so 5 is a literal now now how it is different than a constant let us see how it executes how it converts so add a register 5 5 we have taken as an example here so 5 is the memory word which is associated for it and now it is converting that as again a declare constant the mnemonic op code with the value assigned is 5 now in this case it is again a constant but the literals location is not specified therefore it is protected by the assembler its value is not changed during the execution we cannot change the value of it why it is considering this as a literal same example in another high level languages if we are considering that integer z equal to 5 x equal to x plus 5 so in this case 5 is a literal which we are using hence Literals cannot be changed during the program execution and these are more safe and protected than a constant. Why? Because using declare constant we can change the value as we, we have seen earlier. So literals appear at the part of the execution. These are the part of the executions. Now let us see some advanced assembler directives. One of the assembler directive is origin. What this origin does? It changes the location counter value. It sets the location counter to the specified address. Usually the, the program executes in a normal way. If we want to change the location counter value, we are using origin. Here the example is origin 113. So the location counter value is directly specified with the address 113. Next one is EQU, which is for the equal symbol. That is, it gives the symbolic name to a numeric constant. So directly here in this case, we can say that the example is back. So back is a label which is having the address as 113. And LTORG, this is for literal origin which is allocating the memory for the literals and is assembler, assembles the literals into a literal pool. So if we are specifying the value for it, automatically the literal pools are assigned to it. These are the references. Thank you.